Okay, well, you've just joined me for the final bits of drawing on this very intense plan for my next painting, which is, as you can see, a 747. Another special commission. This one's not going as far as the last one, which was Texas in the USA. This one is going local. Well, New South Wales anyway. So, join me on the journey of this very tight and intense commission. Love you all. So now we've got the drawing in place. Um, I'm very happy with that. I don't want to change anymore because I've been changing it for days and days already. The windows are crazy. There's heaps of them. And and the design, I'm starting to lose the design in areas like this, but it's okay because I'll find it when I start painting. So here it is, the final, the last 747 <coughs> in the Qantas fleet to fly away. And uh, my first commission for a 747, which is lovely. Here we go. Now the next step, um, you can join me. I'm just going to spray it with a fixative. Okie doke. It's fixative time. Here it is. This is the fixative that I use. Um, I did have some more highfalutin stuff, but being out in the regions, there's not a lot of this uh, stuff for sale. So you give it a good shake. What we can do, look, a lot of people don't like to use fixative, and that is because, apparently, it makes the oil fall off. Well, I've been doing this for more years than most of you have lived, and haven't experienced that. So, But this is a good way of fixing your drawing to your canvas, okay? Because what happens after that is we do a wash. Well, I do a wash. <coughs> Hard to open. Here we go. So it's just quick, a quick spray. As you just keep the spray to the image itself. And you're gonna try and get a bit of a, about a 45 degree angle on that. So, if you like, you can just cross it like that. Then you change it over. You wait a second or two. And, Give it a crisscross again. And try and get that 45 degree angle. I know it's hard. I'm not doing that. So, and there we go again. You don't have to do it this many times. But you just need to do it to keep it on there. And I'm, I'm gonna be working this pretty intently, so I want it stuck. Here we go again. And he's not doing the 45 degree angle very well. And I think that will do us to fix our 747 to the canvas. Don't forget, when you're finished, just give it a bit of a, like that, and that clears the nozzle so you can use it next time. There you go. That's fixing a drawing to a canvas. Mm. I can never get these lids on! Ah. Mm. <coughs> it's there, fix it in. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is mix up a bit of orange for the, for the want of a better description, the undercoat of this, this um, painting. Uh, Cause I want, I love to use orangey colors you know, orangey is probably not the most technical term for them, but those golden, glowy kind of colours that go underneath the, the painting. 
So there's this tiny little, those tiny little bits where you miss, you're getting that golden glow through and it actually comes through the layers of paint. So have a look. I'm going to do it now. Orange. Cupboard. Right, there's various ways we can get orange. We can go straight for the tube, or we can mix red and some yellow in here. But today, because I'm running out of this stuff, I want to finish the tube. So I'm going to see. This is another thing I'm going to do a video about. Bloody tops. And anyway, we won't get there. Um, so today I'm going to use cadmium orange as my undercoat. Okay? Okay, here's my orange tube of paint. You've got to get pliers onto them nowadays to get this stuff out. There we go, that wasn't as hard as I thought. A lot of times the tops will just vaporise on you. So then you get you get your orange, beautiful orange paint. Put a squirt of it on your palette. Like that. That was probably way too much for what I need. But um, but that's alright. So the next thing you do is get your bottle of terps. Um, I'm going a bit hard on this, so I'm just going to use normal terps. But what you can use is the gum terps, which is probably recommended. Don't ever use household terps on stuff, okay? And so use that. And well, if you uh, you don't like that, just do what I do and use this other version. It's a bit housey, but it's okay for what I want to do. Okay, now you get your palette knife, if you have one you like, you just use it. That's a bit of Russian in me. I like this one. This is nice. So firstly, what I'm going to do is separate. See, I'm taking that bit away. And then I'm just going to squish this up. Like that, I'm going to drop a bit of terps in. Okay. You may want to use a larger, a larger format palette knife as you get into this. Because it is a, it's a bit of a squishy job. So there we go. A bit more juice. I may have to add a bit more paint to this because that doesn't look like it is enough. So. I'll bring in some more of that into this and then it's just a process of squishing it down. I think we'll go with our bigger, our bigger version of our palette knife, if I can find it. Here it is, it's a spoony kind of one and I'll just dry it off because it's been in the Kero. I use Kero for cleaning my brushes. So we just spread it nicely. And the whole idea of this is to make a thin wash, okay? We're not actually painting, we're washing it over. All right? So a bit more Kara, a bit more Terps. Okay, when you get the idea, so I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, we've got the orange paint to a very, very liquidy kind of texture. I don't think you can see that. See that? Blip, blip, blip. So the next thing for us to do, and hopefully we've got enough here, is to keep stirring it, put a bit more terps on, right? This is getting to where we're just about ready to paint. 
Alright, here out it's all squishy and watery. That's the best texture. Okay. So there we go. There's our wash. Man's work is never done. Wish wash. Alright. Alright, I've mixed up the uh, that washy stuff. Now I'm going to get a fan brush and then I'm going to put it on this canvas. So I'm going to put you in a bit of a time lapse, time warp, so you can see that process. Okay? And plenty, and plenty of stuff. Plenty of under paint, plenty of orange. So now what we do is wipe it off. Seems funny, doesn't it? You spend all that time putting it on just to wipe it off. So when we get some of this, it tends to um, get a bit fluffy, but you got to watch that. So now I get a bit of the paper and just wipe it back a little bit. I'd better turn off the talking heads available on iTunes uh, so I don't breach anyone's comfort zones. You know, artists work to music a lot, but it seems whenever you put something up and you've been working to the music, some country will ban you. Somewhere they will ban you for using that music. And uh, I don't know when we're going to start being charged royalties for using music in the car, but it probably is going to come soon. All right, I'm going to change from the paper to a bit of fabric. It tends to suck it up a bit better. Broken on the water. See that? So just a bit of a wipe off so that the thing doesn't seem too heavy, you know. That's it. Oh no. That's okay though. You can take off the bit of light if you want. I'm going to put that back though. So if you just wipe off too much, you can always just dab it back on. There we go. And then just take a little bit of wipe action. And there you go. You're back to square, whatever you square you like. Okay, that's going to have to sit for a while. That's going to have to sit for a while. So that dries. And then I'm going to put the sky in. That should be another adventure in painting. Thanks for being with me for the wash up. This is Yanni, and you're with Yanni in his art studio, learning how to paint a painting. Good luck.